All right, we are back with Stephanie Shriak, who's the head of Emily's List. Talk to us a little bit about how they're seeing the race and what to expect tonight. Stephanie, yeah. what do you think? Well, first off, you know, I get to run the most amazing organization in the country that's completely committed to electing pro-choice Democratic women to office Emily's List, and I get to watch three women on the debate <laughs> stage tonight. Like, I've already won. <laughs> like, this, this is exactly what we've been working for for 35 years, to see these extraordinary women step up and run, and to have two of them really in the top tier right now. I mean, this is... I mean, history's being made every day now, so we're smiling all the time at Emily's List. But I'm really excited to see what happens tonight. I feel like I've been with you at events <laughs> talking about Madam Presidents. Indeed. Indeed you were. Years ago. Years ago. Years ago. Uh, no, actually, I'm trying to think it was 2013. Mm-hmm. I'll be very, I remember that mm-hmm. uh, when we were just try, trying to lay out a case that this country is ready, ready for a woman president. And, you yeah, know, and we we're, we're getting closer and we, we put a lot, lot, lot of cracks in the ceiling, and you know, Hillary Clinton probably won the popular vote by over th- you know, three million votes, but this, this time to see these leaders. What I love about this moment is that, you know, on the stage tonight, you've got Senator Elizabeth Warren, Senator Kamala Harris, and Senator Amy Klobuchar. These are three very different individuals, right? I mean, yeah. I think so often everybody gets this mindset, because they don't see a lot of women in these roles. Like, there's one picture, and now you're going to see this variety of leadership that is very different, and it's not male leadership. It's a different kind of leadership, and it's each one of them telling their story and their vision, and I just think that's what's so powerful, because finally it's like, hey, I too can be that person. I can be a little different, and it's okay. So do you have a favorite? No, I, you know, I honestly, God, I don't, I don't. It's really hard because okay. we've worked so closely with, with all of the senators for a long time, and a lot of just cheering them all on. Uh, I think they're bringing a lot of new people into the process. Uh, you know, and some of the male candidates are too. I don't like want to. I mean, really, they're like good guys too. I'm, we've got. A well, you guys have supported men before, yeah. right? Or at least you have. No, well, I, I <laughs> Stephanie have. Triak, have. Uh, Emily's List has not. But we, um, I mean, Democrats should be really happy right now. And, I, and the funny thing is they're not you, right? You've talked to Democrats across the country. They are panicking. And my mom's like, these people are really good. Like, we've got some good candidates here. So, so you, Let's let this play itself out. Don't panic. I mean, we are in a good spot here. So you mentioned that panic. One of the questions that we hear when people are having their quiet, real conversations is, is America really ready to elect either a woman or a woman of color or another person of color? Uh, or should, you know, Democrats play it safe and just pick the most bland white guy they can find? Let's just be real. That's what we hear. Uh, is, is, what do you say to when people say that? Yeah. I say that the person who is going to put together the winning coalition with the enthusiasm you need to do that through this primary is going to be our best candidate. And this 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 general election next year is going to be I'm mean, polarized the country's polarized this is about massive turnout it is about energy it is about enthusiasm and it is about walking away from the deep deep just cuts and wounds that Donald Trump has put into this country and you're looking for somebody who's going to heal and bring us to a new place gender race you got to put that aside what you got to think is who do I think is going to be the best president for this country to heal this nation? That's what we've got to be looking for. And it's hard, though, right, because we're thinking it's a heart versus head. Heart versus head. Yeah. You hear that all the yeah. time. Uh, but I think the person who's going to bring that energy in your heart, if you have that feeling in your heart, don't you think other people are, too? So I, I warn of the safe choice. And, you know, if you have safe choices, they got to find the enthusiasm, too. Like, yeah. everybody's got their, got their tasks in front of them. So I have heard you talk in the past about the math for how do you think Democrats win. And what do you, when you look at the presidential campaign and the entire, you know, the field of the country as any candidate goes in to do this, yeah. you talked about enthusiasm, but um, what's your thinking about how a Democrat actually pulls this off in 2020? Well, I think it's really important to realize that 2020 
is not 2016. This is a very different election. We are up against a sitting incumbent president who, as of this week, his job approval is 38. Now it's going to go up and down. But 60 percent of the country, they don't like him. This is a huge opportunity. That's different. That's different than four years ago. We also have a huge growing energy among women voters. And we saw that in 2018. We saw an election uh, in that midterm where the electorate in those key districts were 54 percent women. Which, just in case you want to do the math, that means there's only 46% men. I mean, that's a big difference and super unusual in the midterm. If that growth continues going into the presidential, which I think it will, we could be looking at electorates with a much higher percentage of women. And if we have 55, 56, then all of a sudden you're looking at Pennsylvania and you just, that's a different group of people voting. Again, it's 2020. She asked me to my final point is I do think women are going to decide this election. I think the women in the suburbs are going to be fired up. We're seeing it in election after election across this country. Uh, I know there is a great, great desire to get our our guys with the hard hats out of the mines. I talk about this all the time, and, and we want to get them back. And what we want to do for this country and for the economy is going to be good for those families. I'm telling you, instead of hyper-focusing on that guy, what we should be doing is thinking about the young woman at the diner who's getting his coffee. Those are the women who are looking for change. They're looking for opportunity. And I think that's why Democrats should actually... I mean, be nervous, but don't let that drop your excitement because we have a huge opportunity and women are going to lead the way.